the mercies of God. God is a merciful God. Amen. He's a compassionate God. Amen. He does not always make us pay for the mistake we have made. So he said, may I fall in the hand of God rather than in the hand of my enemies. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. He did not become king because he was connected to the king. He became king because God promised him that he will be king and he was anointed to be king. I want to say again, what God say he will do in your life, he will do it. I receive it. If it's taking long, wait, wait. for it. It's not a man that he may lie. Amen. Nor is he a son of man that he may repent. Yes. Whatever proceeds out of his mouth will come to pass. Amen. David became king. Mm. Because God says so. Hallelujah. Mm. I receive this Tell word. Somebody say, I will get there. I will get there. Because God says so. Because God said so. Now, as a king, he had great power. He began to expand his kingdom. He had affirmed his throne. David had fame around. He had one of the best armies ever. He became comfortable. He knew that God was with him and that he could flow. And he began to flow in the land. David is the new king. Mm. David is the best king. David is the ruling king. David is the king on the throne. And so it happened. Second Samuel 24. He decided, let me now, after putting my reliance completely on God, let me also know what I have. <laughs> let me also do a census of what I have. So, just like the nation who boast by the size of the armies, oh, I may also boast on the size of my army. And the thing depleases the pleased God. Because you see, so far, before that point, all he had put his faith on was his God. He may have had an army and people who were well trained, but his strength and his faith was in God, not in the material thing he had. But you see, David became comfortable. He also wanted to know how strong am I? Am I able to terrify them because of my armies? So he called the commander of his army and uh, he deployed him. He said, go and do a census. I want to know what I have. It was just, just to know what he had. The census was to let the enemy know the strength of his army. He wanted to rate himself according to the levels and the standards set by man. Oh. You see, I'm educated. I have two diplomas from a non-registered uh, college. <laughs> uh, the, the, this person wanted to become B. Let me tell you, there are times where men comfort and peace Tranquility and quiet mind is resting only on feeble things. There are people who you see them smiling. They're not smiling because God is on their side. They're smiling because their husband bought them something yesterday. The joy depends on the things they have on the outside. You see him today so happy, so joyful, but uh, it's not for long because everything that uh, is material will fail you. Do That's not right. put your faith on your money, on your network. Put your faith on your God. God. I thank God for what you have in the bank. I thank God for what you're currently doing now. You got a tender. A big tender. We thank God for the tender. But let me tell you, don't put your faith on what you have. Right. Put your faith in the Lord your God. Lift your hand and say, I'll put my faith on your God. 
I put my faith on you, God. So David began to count how many people he had. He sent Joab, the commander of his army, and the this man, competent, went through all the land of Israel, and he went to Judah, and he counted over 800,000 men who can draw the sword, meaning that the men who had it to fight, men who were in the level of battles, men who were of the age to engage in battle, 800,000 in Israel, and 500,000 in Judah. What an army. Over a million people could stand with David in any battlefield and fight. You see, David now had that in front of him. But being a sensitive man in the spirit, the Bible says as soon as David heard it, his conscience, his heart condemned him. David, God is on your side. Amen. What you have done... You have done wrong. You have done it so you may lean on the natural mm. instead of leaning in the supernatural. Verse 8, the Bible says, I'm still in 2 Samuel 24. Verse 8, the Bible says, So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. A lengthy census. They had to count everyone. Verse 9, then Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword. And the men of Judah were 500,000, a great army before David. And David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have seen greatly in what I have done. But now I pray, O oh Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. As soon as David heard that, as soon as it was consumed, his heart began to beat. It's funny how sometimes you realize what you have done only once you have consumed it. Mm. While doing the thing, you are at peace, you you enjoying it. It took nine months and 20 days. In all that time, David was at peace until he got the report and his heart began to beat. You say, I will diet, I will not eat beggars anymore. Beggar you and me will see each other in heaven. You, you, you cut all tiles with beggars. But look, it so happened. You were just passing, and it was one o'clock, and they presented a beggar. You took the beggar. You gave thanks to God. You ate it. First bite, second bite. All your heart was filled with joy. At the last, when you swallow, your heart are condemning you. Hey, I had said to myself, who am I talking to? I receive. You are here. <laughs> Well, the Bible says that David's heart condemned him. He knew he had done wrong. What I love with David, every time he goes on the wayside, he runs to God. And he said to God, I have sinned against you. But now I want you to see this. Now, when David arose in the morning after confessing and feeling guilty about that, verse 11, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God, David's seer saying, I want you to read it with me. One, two, three. Now. I, I, I love that. In the morning, David arose in the morning. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to who? The to the prophet. Who was that prophet? Prophet God, the word came to the prophet. See, sometimes for your own good, God will lead you through a prophet. And right. the word didn't come to David, though his heart condemned him. The word of God came to the prophet God. 
the prophet has a word for you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. And you see, there is a comma there. Did you see the comma? Did you see the comma? Prophet God, there is a comma. And you see, that prophet, speaking about a prophet, is David's seer. Yeah. Now, David's seer here simply means David's own seer. As a king, David has his personal seer. The seer was a prophet. I keep on saying, there is no great king without a prophet. That's right. God was not one of the prophets of David. You cannot have prophets. Are you hearing me? Amen. David had a prophet. And in the time of his mess, the word of God came to the prophet for him. And the Bible says, that word came to prophet God and explain. Because not every prophet can really speak in your life. That's right. Some people can give you a general word. But there are people who can go deeper. Because you are the assignment. That's so right. the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to, uh, to the prophet God, comma, David's seer. Yeah. Do you have a seer? Oh, yes. Count yourself blessed mm. if you know this one mm. is my man of God. Oh God. This one is my prophet. Oh Lord. God has a word for me in his life. I have a seer. You see, every time the word is coming, like right now, what we are doing now is exactly this. The word of the Lord came to prophet of Lukau. Oh, your own yes. seer. I have a seer. So what life. I'm saying to you is because God's word came. And that word is for you. Yes. Please, I have a seat. Those, this word was uh, not an easy word. Verse 12, the Bible said, He said, go and tell David, God speaking, that says, the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself that I may do it to you. The olden days, things were harsh. So God came to David and told him, and he said to him, Shall seven years of a man come to, come to you in your land? Or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days plague in your land? Now consider and see what answer I shall take back to him who sent me. So he came to him. Remember, this is no time of grace. Mm -hmm. The man of God came and was ready to dish out the word as God had said. He said to him, you have done wrong. And now I present to you, according to what God is saying, this situation, you choose either for seven years, there'll be for mine, or for three months, you will fall in the sword of your enemy. The last one, for three days, there'll be plague in your land. And he says to him, choose now of the tree, so I may know what to say to he who sent me. Verse 14, and David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. Lift your hand. Say, I will not fall into the hand of man. I will not fall into the hand of man. Now, David weighed the tree. Seven days, seven years of mine. Three months in the hand of the enemy. While they're pursuing you. Being defeated. Three days of a plague. While weighing, he said to the man of God. I prefer to fall in the hand of God. Why? Because his mercies are great. The mercies of God. God is a merciful God. Amen. He's a compassionate God. Amen. It, it does not always make us pay for the mistake we have made. So he said, may I fall in the hand of God? God, rather than in the hand of my enemies, the hand of men, I decree and I declare, 
you will not fall in the hand of men. I receive it. Men will not determine your future. In the name of Jesus. Your blessings are not determined by the will of men. I receive. What you are and what you'll be will not have to do with men but God. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. God bless you. Please have a seat. Verse 15. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time. From then to Beersheba, 70,000 men of the people died. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the stretching floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. Because he chose the three days of blood, the Bible says, God released an angel. And this angel stretched his hand in one day. From then till Bathsheba, the plague began to touch people. That day, from morning till the appointed time of the same day, the Bible reports that 70,000 people died. 70,000 is a great crowd in one day. Simply because the angel stretched his hand. You see, there is a ministry of a hand. Oh, Either of laying on of a hand or stretching hands. Mm -hmm. Here it is not a devil. This is an angel. Mm. And God said to him, stretch your hand. Often time when I stretch my hand by God, I see miracles taking place Amen. because there is a ministry behind that. Amen. All the angel did was to stand on the commandment of God and stretch his hand. And the Bible reports that from then to Bathsheba, in a couple of hours, not one person died, not that seven people died, not that 70 people, 700 people died, or 7,000. The Bible reports 70,000 people died. Mm. This is more than a national crisis. Even Ebola doesn't kill people like that. As the angel stretches end, over 70 people died from Den to Bathsheba. And then now that very same angel was about to stretch his hand to Jerusalem, where the king was. He wanted to bring the same calamity there. He chose three days of plan. But I tell you, millions could have died in these three days. So he was stretching his hand. But God being God, God being full of love, God being merciful, you, God being compassionate, Thank you, Lord. God being the God who loves you, he looked down and said, enough! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hear me. I can hear the voice of God clearly mm. saying again in somebody's life, God, I've seen your pain. And he's saying, enough. You have cried enough. So God is intervening. The Bible said God related to the destruction of Jerusalem and spoke to the angel who was stretching his hand toward Jerusalem and said to him, enough enough now you have mm. suffered long you have cried enough enough now oh, they have lied about you they have thrown you down they have thrown dust on you there is no respect or dignity in you god is looking and saying no 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 enough who am i Thank speaking you, to Jesus. be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching the bible say and david not the prophet and David built there an altar to the Lord. David built an altar. David and David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prayers of the land. When did the Lord heed the prayer of the land? After the altar was in place, was raised, was built, you live your life just like that as a child of God. You go church to church, conference to conference. Your life, no substance. It's just you. You, you wait.
you like a pepper. You, you don't have weight. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Arthur Kao on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Arthur Kao on all social media platforms at Arthur Kao.